So we can start. Right. Thank you very much for your time. Sure. Okay, so in early May in Como, state of Mississippi, we know that you serve a ceremony in a local Baptist church. Yes. To document the episode about music and the spiritual experience, including the documentary that yes. the BBC is making about the cultural power of the music. Yes. Can you tell us something about this and what is your spiritual feeling about the music? Music is something we all know that we like. Mm -hmm. uh, we like to dance to it, we like to sing songs, and we know that music is nice. What we don't really appreciate is how deeply ingrained music is as a human trait. We are controlled by music. Um, it's the only art form that will force us to move. You know, a great Shakespeare play, intellectually it's inspiring, a great Rembrandt painting, it's beautiful, it has all the power of art, but only music physically makes you move. And what sort of movement is that? An overt sexual display in public. Um, and there's no mistaking the body language. And that's, music does that. Also, if you look at popular music, it's 90% love songs. So not only does it create the act of making a baby now, but it also is bonding. It holds people together. Not just two people, but a, like a football chant. It, a whole society. And in fact, uh, 40,000 years ago, uh, the first music, evidence of music, flutes found in a cave in, in Germany, uh, which, just for perspective, is 20 years before humans figured out how to plant things and how to keep cattle. When they figured out how to plant things, and, and when the technology arrived at um, farming, the human population exploded because we could feed more people and so on. But 20,000 years before that, humans invented music before all that. And coincidentally, when the music appears, the evidence of music all over the world is the first flutes and things, Neanderthal disappears. Uh, Homo florensis disappears. At that time, there were many different kinds of human, hominids, and around the invention of music, they all disappeared. Why is that? Even though Neanderthals had bigger brains, bigger teeth, just the meaner, gnarlier motherfuckers, <laughs> The archaeologist's theory is that music enabled Homo sapiens to develop larger communities. When they sing together, they're more bonded. And so us 30 Homo sapiens are going to go kick out those five Neanderthals because we're organized. And the music was an organizing factor in hominids. It also, because I spent time in the church there, but I also went to New York City to the um, Hillsong um, Christian service, and they went for the Easter service, and it's like a U2 concert. It's like they, they brought it, they, they put it online, and they have tens of millions of followers online. And it's very ripped jeans, strange facial hair, pointy shoes, and very hip. Because Jesus Christ is our Lord. And they have all the lyrics up there, and it's like the music is pumping, and it's like, and you see the people they are all improved, healed, made better, saved, forgiven, everything they lead. I'm an atheist. I was raised by fastidious atheists. Um, and I was sent, when I went to boarding school, they sent me to church. But, but you cannot deny all those people, also with the Ganawa and, and, and Morocco, the Sufis, I was with them as well. And you can't deny that it has power. And when the music stops for the Easter service, the music stops and the preacher starts talking about how Jesus, he died on the cross and they mutilated him and the, his body and that made God forgive everybody. And really? Can we get the music going again? Because <laughs> I'm like, I'm saved, I'm saved. And then the guy starts talking. Without the music, it's a really hard sell. But with music, it all makes sense. And so music has this power, and it's this, this documentary series is not about um, the history of music or great musicians, it's about what it does to us. And uh, 20 years as a film composer, my job was to make the audience, tell the audience how to feel. Should they be laughing at the scene, or is it a tragic scene? Um, 
should I believe this guy or not? In fact, the handsome guy says to the woman, I love you, and he's handsome, it's Tom Cruise, you know, Sandra Bullock, and the moon is shining at your eyes. All your information says this is beautiful. But the problem is that the plot is that he's a liar and he's ripping her off. Audience needs to know that, bad chord. And so who are you gonna believe? Your lying eyes or that minor chord? And which brings me to another point. That chord, that minor chord, everybody understands it. Everybody understands that that's a bad chord. This is a happy chord. They know that. Everybody knows music more than they think. We are all musicians. Because in modern, no, in modern world, we don't imagine that you're a musician unless you're Eric Clapton. But that's not true. That's because we specialize now and we take it to the extreme degree. That every human being remembers a tune, can sing a tune, can dance in time to music, understand a minor chord versus a major chord, or, you know, there's a million chords, you know, happy, sad. Is it sad but with a little touch of humor? You know, humor with a touch of sadness, totally different chord. And this language of music is understood more deeply than anyone thinks. People think, oh, I don't know anything about music. But they know what the musical language is. And the musical language bypasses your mind. It doesn't talk to your mind. Your education, your social position, none of that. It goes straight to your heart, straight to your emotions. And what do you think is more important, determinant of your behavior? Your feelings. Your feelings drive your thinking, not the other way around. So music talks to your feelings straight without any of your thinking. It goes straight to your feelings. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Very, very good point of view. Well, it's been a fun thing because I get to talk to Francis Coppola about how he used music. I get to talk to Steve Reich yeah. and about his hypnotic music. I, get, I, I talked to Sting. Yeah. We had a good laugh. Okay. A conversation I've never had with him. We've argued about Roxanne, <laughs> but never about the meaning of music. Why do we do this? Why we go out to 80,000 people? Why are they so happy? What is it? What are we doing? And he had some great answers. I mean, I, I, we never had that conversation, but he's obviously been thinking about it as well. He had some very good answers. Okay, thank you. It's a very interesting point of view, really. Come, second question. You won't need to ask very many questions. <laughs> no, 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 just to okay, okay. Lately, you have developed two orchestral projects. Stuart Copeland Orchestra Binu, based on the 1925 famous movie, Binu, and the new, oh, yes. the Stuart Copeland Lights Up the Orchestra. Actually, there are three. The three? There's also Tyrant's Crush. Ah, okay. We didn't know, sorry. Well, Tyrant's Crush, uh, Lights Up the Orchestra is Pops. Okay. You know, yeah. film scores, uh, yeah. pop songs, whatever. Ben Hur is with a movie. Yeah. Tyrant's Crush is what they call core classical. It play, it's a concerto for drums and orchestra. It's half an hour, and it plays on the same evening as Ravel, Debussy, Mahler, Brahms, and it's a classical. Only classical. It's music. a classical music, and I come in. You know, either they have a pianist playing Rachmaninoff, or they have a violin play, player playing, you know, um, whatever. Okay. Or they have me playing my concerto. Okay. And so that's a very different atmosphere. Yeah, I imagine. And the uh, question was, in this context, the drum set would seem to have less creative space uh, than the project related to the jazz or to the trio polis. Uh, so, how do Wait you... Wait a minute, what did you say? You less think, creative yeah. space? Could, could be, this is all the question. No, that's much more. Much more, no, that is what, this is the question that, okay. that, you know, that uh, someone told me to, to ask to you. You don't even need to finish your question <laughs> and I'll start talking. <laughs> okay, 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 good. Okay, so, was, uh, how do you get this experience and how did you get the passion for this more classical context? The first music that made an impression when I was five, six years old, uh, my mother, the archaeologist, was playing Carmina Buron. So on your biography, I saw this. Yeah, and the Stravinsky, Rites of Spring, and Petrushka, uh, Debussy, uh, Ravel. Yeah. And that's, that meant something to me, and I would sit in the dark and listen to it and imagine shapes and everything, and that really was the essence of mystery. And my father, when he discovered, I'm the youngest of four, when he discovered that I could actually have the, the gift, because it is a gift, uh, no matter how much you want to be a musician, 
the gift, you know, to, to be able to do it extra special. Of course, we all have it, but to take it to the next level, to be Eric Clapton, it's a gift. And so he, he trained me as a jazz musician, which is why I don't listen to jazz. I love my father. He was a great inspiration in every way, except for the jazz thing. Because right at that moment, Jimi Hendrix appeared. And we are like ducks, humans are. And like a duck, the first warm thing they see, that's their mother. Okay. And with humans, the first music when you're a teenager and 16, the music that lights you up, that's your daddy. Okay. And for me, my daddy is Jimi Hendrix. Okay. And uh, whatever, whatever you were listening to when you were 16, what were you listening to when you were 16? Mm, I don't know. You don't know. I, I know. I probably Duran Duran. Probably okay, Duran something. Duran. Yeah, that would be yeah, yeah. the sweet spot yeah. for you. you even, know. even if I like a lot of disco music, I know yeah. that usually no one's like a lot of disco music, but I really like. I don't know what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Jimi Hendrix came. That was it for jazz. But the Stravinsky stayed there. So I'd walk down the street with <laughs> Hendrix in this half of my brain, and Stravinsky in this half of my brain, and it's always been like that. But then I had a rock and roll band okay. and did that whole thing. After that, I became, I got a call from Francis Ford Coppola, who hired me to score a movie. And the first time I had done that, and I discovered a whole new world of music that didn't involve a song. There's two chords, or one chord, or you know, you know, just different forms of music with different instrumentation, everything. And one day he says, it's great, because I played everything myself, the guitar, bass, the mallets and everything. He says, it's great, it's very interesting, very interesting, but we need strings. Okay, so I call the contractor. He's the guy who um, uh, hires all the players. And he brings in strings, and I have a string session, and I realize this is really great. And so for the next 20 years, I learned how to write music on the page yeah. for an orchestra. And then the great thing about that is that this show we're playing, 90 minute show, or actually more like 80 minutes, um, if it was a band, we would rehearse for six weeks. If it was the police, we would rehearse for four months. Three guys for four months. <laughs> <laughs> I can't understand. It's complicated. Uh, our singer is a genius. Slightly autistic. Yeah. My heart is full of love and admiration. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, I imagine, I imagine. Um, but here, we were usually we rehearse for two and a half hours. Take the rest of the day off. We have a sound check for the one and a half hour of the show. We play a show in England, for instance, with the professional orchestra. I meet them at two o'clock. That we play the concert that night. You can't do that with a band, with a rock band. When all the music is on the page, and that's what I learned how to do for 20 years, was put the music on the page. And it's not just the notes, da 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 da, it's da 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 da. You know, the articulation, as I call it, the Italian. Italian? You know, uh, subito. Ah, subito piano. Yeah. You know, and, uh, or uh, sempre, keep, keep going, you know. Going, yeah. Well, all these expressions, the articulation, you know, da 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 you know, the, the tonguing of the trumpet. Are they go or they go da 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 You hear the difference, they one breath. And the other one is modulated. Yeah, and so there's all kinds of, and on each instrument it's different. The violin, they have their version of articulation, and then they, it's all different. So that language, it's not, too complicated, but over 20 years I learned this language. And when I retired from film composing, because I don't do that anymore, I devote my energy to creating this concept. Last thing that I want to ask to you, no question. What do you have, because you have a you know, volcano of ideas, you have a full of energy, what is your next project on your mind? Well, I told you about the the documentary. documentary. I love that work. With the BBC one. Yeah, and because I, I get to talk to Francis Coppola or Patti Smith or Bobby McFerrin, not like at a dinner party, hey, I love your work, love your work, but two hours with a microphone and really get into it. You know, I like that. 
and uh, with really interesting work. It's kind of like your work, I guess. You know? <laughs> but I'm on a mission for a specific thing. I'm not talking about Steve Reich and his music. I'm talking about Steve Reich and what he imagines as the purpose of music. It's a fantastic job. But when I finish this and some more shooting for the BBC in July, I begin my sixth opera for the Weimar uh, National Opera in Germany. And uh, that will take me the rest of the year. Okay. Close the doors, shut the windows, shut, cut off the phone and for six months. Usually you do this kind of uh, things inside your house or in the countryside. I have, I have a studio. You have a studio, okay. Yeah. So you, you, you close yourself inside a studio for so a long time. Yeah, it's very nice to be closed yes, in course. there. I, I wanna, every morning, I've been making music for 60 years and still I can't wait to finish breakfast so that I can get into my studio and start. American working. breakfast or Italian breakfast? Uh, American. American breakfast, okay. Thanks thank you very much for your time. Thank really you. Really appreciate it. Good. Finito.